Hello, everyone. This is Olivia.、Um, I want to talk about sentiment lexicon, which is related to tutorial three A.、Um, first,、um, why sentiment lexicon? So, if we go back to the challenges of sentiment classification、um, related to the use of supervised learning approach,、um, the main challenge is that it depends on sentiment labels. Um, allow the real-world applications such as、um, uh, tweets and uh, for, uh, blogs,、uh, forum discussions.、Um, they're not;、uh, they don't always have explicit sentiment labels. So if they're not available and、um, uh, manually creating labels for them,、uh, not、uh, is not. Immediately possible, then the alternatives will be unsupervised learning, and、uh, one of the most、uh, popular unsupervised learning approaches to sentiment、uh, classification or sentiment analysis will be to use、uh, lexicon,、uh, which is a collection of words or some sort of、uh, pattern matching,、uh, heuristic rules,、uh, or using other、uh, popular uns. Supervised methods such as、uh, class three. So,、um, in addition to using sentiment lexicon for unsupervised learning、uh, for sentiment extraction,、um, there could also be use of、uh, domain-based、uh, lexicon to help with feature extraction. For example,、um, when、uh, a sentiment lexicon is available. Then the feature ex extraction could be a bit more focused on matching the words or、uh, phrases in a lexicon、um, and count the occurrences of those matches in、uh, the corpus. So these are some、uh, examples of uses of、uh, sentiment lexicon, and we will also go over them in the、uh, in tutorial three A. So、uh, then, a little bit more uh, 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 sentiment lexicon before the, uh, uh, demonstrating how to、uh, use one simplest,、uh, one very common、uh, sentiment lexicon、uh, out there in tutorial three A. So、uh, you know, for a simple definition of,、um, of sentiment lexicon is basically a list. Of words or phrases that reflect sentiment, and in addition to this list,、um, very similar to document term metrics, that we should also associate some sort of numerical or some sort of a representation uh, uh, in regards to sentiment, such as sentiment value. It can be classes, positive, negative. So there will be negative words, positive words, negative phr phrases, positive phrases. Uh, so the words and their sentiment value are、uh, included in the lexicon.、Um, other、uh, sentiment values that are quite common、uh, and popular are some sort of numerical scores or ratings, for example, probabilities or ranks,、uh, and tend to be between zero and one. For example, a word、uh, "amazing" can be a positive. Uh, has a zero point nine positive sentiment,、um, but you no, know, there's sometimes in sarcastic sentences that amazing could also be、uh, there and may also have negative sentiment.、Uh, there are a lot of lexicons out there.、Uh, we will use uh, very uh, ones that have started quite early,、uh, being uh, uh, used a lot、uh, in demo code out there, and we will add. Also,、uh, use some of the demo code in our tutorial three A and embed uh, the, uh, the sample code of using this into、um, different、uh, uses of sentiment lexicon.、Um, another very popular one is Sandy WordNet, which is WordNet that includes uh, sentiment uh, scores, and、uh, currently in about two thousand. Twelve or thirteen or fourteen that the most recent version three point oh was released.、Um, there are a lot of others quite popular, either used by proprietary、uh, t 
tools such as uh, like uh, psychologists has a very uh, popular tool and list called uh, LIWC and uh, emotional ratings uh, lexicon thing is a very popular one and uh, there's some that has been uh, created uh, um, by crowd uh, on uh, MTurk and um, that created an NCR so these are many popular ones there are additional popular ones even more um, current and more um, um, pretty popular for uh, blogging or microblogging um, and uh, this website has maintained many uh, some information about these lexicons, including several of this and uh, amongst others. So going forward, when you are interested in applying sentiment lexicon to your or some sort of uh, emotional or uh, psychological lexicon to your tasks, um, there are keep in mind that there are a lot of good lexicons out there. So. Um, I just want to also mention that how sentiment lexicon uh, can be generated and uh, because the use of sentiment lexicon is very popular so maintaining a good one is very related to the approaches that generate um, uh, that have been used to generate sentiment lexicon um, there are some good uh, references and good detailed discussion about these approaches because these are um, somewhat complicated alg algorithms and uh, including uh, the, the free book uh, that you can download from uh, by Bing Liu uh, has go over these uh, approaches. There are three main approaches manual um, and being one and the other two are automated um, approaches. A manual is just basically uh, requiring either experts for example for emotional um, lexicon then psychologists, social scientists uh, can be uh, maybe the uh, represent the group of experts that uh, generate the lexicons and can be very time consuming evolve over decades um, and um, uh, others and more, nowadays more and more people will go to uh, online crowdsourcing online labor markets to ask the crowd to help uh, tag or generate uh, uh, lexicon text for or sentiment text for um, for uh, using some corpus so this type of approach uh, because it's time consuming oftentimes it's good to be combined with automated approaches so um, two automated approaches um, are dictionary based or corpus and corpus based so dictionary based will use some um, popular uh, dictionary for example wordnet um, and in before using the dictionary uh, the approach will start with some C words um, so f for example for sentiment lexicon the C words will be uh, senti wo sentiment words so seed words and um, so it could be good, bad, uh, beautiful and those seed words and uh, building on those can find synonyms uh, uh, antonyms of those words, the opposite meanings, then putting the uh, of uh, beautiful, which is positive, then we put uh, antonyms or names of beautiful in the negative sentiment list, and uh, and this is an iterative process because once you find some new uh, words to be added to the lexicon, then you can use them the same way as um, seed words were used to uh, expand the lexicon and this tend to be because the dictionaries tend to be general purpose so the lexicons result from this uh, regardless it could mean sentiments or e emotions but there um, can be more general purpose for um, various sentiment related applications but not so much limited to like financial corpus or 
um, uh, my, uh, microblog corpus or healthcare corpus. So that's what we mean by not so domain specific, but more general purpose. Uh, the second approach of uh, automated um, methods is corpus based to generate sentiment lexicons. Um, and as uh, we, this is sort of uh, filling the gap um, that dictionary based sentiment lexicon generation may not do well. Uh, in that it can be uh, tailored to some domains. For example, tailor the lexicon to be uh, good for uh, contain words that are more uh, 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 appear more in uh, product reviews, restaurant reviews, or microblogs. So, uh, and here are uh, here is an example of why domain specific applications could be helpful. Um, so for, for example, camera reviews or some other products that uses batteries, uh, like cell phones and e uh, electronics. And uh, if you talk about battery life is long, then the word long should be, uh, should have high sentiments, uh, high uh, positive sentiment score. Um, but if it is a restaurant, review that contains the word long and this in the sentence that the way for table is long, then uh, long uh, is negative here. And if a lot of sentences use long this way, then long could actually uh, have a uh, high negative sentiment score in the lexicon. So, um, and if long is in a general purpose lexicon, then um, then it will uh, not uh, necessarily do well with all applications uh, or all, uh, all kinds of corpus that contain the uh, use the word long. Um, but if you want it to be uh, to be more for camera reviews or more for service reviews, uh, then uh, you can you can tailor the lexicon to be domain specific. So. Um, this is not only good to distinguish long to be positive or negative, but could also help extract what we call aspect that what what uh, uh, area or what aspect of um, you know of the product or of the service is being this associated with positive or negative sentiment. So here is uh, the battery aspect of cameras. Um, and uh, in restaurant reviews, then it is the service way, way for servers is um, the aspect or area of um, sentiment. And so uh, to adapt uh, sentiment lexicon for a specific domain, uh, one approach is do sentiment uh, do lexicon expansion. In either cases, uh, it, instead of using a dictionary to find sentiment words to um, be included in sentiment lexicon, the main source of text will be uh, domain-specific corpus as opposed to dictionary. So to expand uh, lexicon using domain corpus, we can use similar approach. Start out with uh, a, uh, a list of seed words uh, about sentiment, and then uh, and then start to discover other sentiment words either based on uh, different approaches. It can be synonyms, uh, uh, antonyms. If we also combine it with dictionary, but it can also be like using association rules, using similarity, and other ways to um, do this. Uh, the second one is uh, a little bit different, um, but still always uh, relies on the use of a domain corpus, um, domain specific corpus, to uh, to build uh, sentiment lexicon. And the but the uh, in initial state is not a smaller list of uh, sentiment words, but rather it can be. Uh, like uh, one of the large popular uh, lexicons out there, and uh, 
but use uh, domain-specific corpus to adapt this to uh, to this domain. When you when we say adapt, it means that we can add more words because especially there are like slangs and uh, longer phrases or uh, uh, abbreviations um, that appear in certain domain more often. Then we can add those or we can change some. And then also not only uh, since the lexicon is not just about the list of words or phrases, but also about the sentiment numer numerical values or categories. So those can also um, be adapted <coughs> in this approach. And if needed, uh, sometimes lexicon can include other semantic information such as um, the aspect information we talk about associated with uh, sentiment. Well, to end, um, now we can um, just briefly remind ourselves that it's good to use sentiment lexicon. We should check regularly whether uh, sentiment lexicon is maintained up to date. And if we are actually active, actively uh, creating and updating sentiment lexicon, so then the issue start to become the, um, the need uh, for us to spend time to maintain it. Otherwise, the performance of using um, sentiment lexicon in different kinds of text processing applications could drop once sentiment lexicon is not um, doing well for, uh, with new corpus. And there are other issues with sentiment analysis in general, and of course, uh, sentiment lexicons. Um, are not excluded from the issues. This include uh, sometimes, like we saw with uh, the word loan, that sentiments can vary by domains, and this have to be very carefully dealt with in the lexicon. Um, sentiment words don't always imply sentiments, and because sometimes just a statement they use or a question use the word uh, sentiment word like mad can be negative, but who is mad? doesn't necessarily mean any sentiment in this case. Um, we also talk about sarcastic sentences, like this one is probably uh, making fun of uh, the poor battery life in a, in a negative way. Um, and first longer and long is used this way, and it's kind of uh, difficult to detect the sen uh, sentiment this way. And uh, in addition, if uh, words that are not in the sentiment lexicons uh, which happen a lot, can also, um, they actually could mean, uh, could even express some sentiments. For example, if none of this have positive or uh, are uh, po uh, in the positive um, uh, sentiment lexicon or the negative sentiment lexicon, um, just because the, it, it's not um, very straightforward, like fast or slow, those things. You just say my heart beats like climbing a hill. And uh, whether climbing a hill or climbing or something like this will become a word, be included in sentiment lexicon, then this will be treated as non sentiment words. And that um, will not, and then uh, the sentiment of this sentence will not be extracted using any um, sentiment words in the lexicon. So that's the, um, uh, the basic concept of sentiment lexicon. We will go to tutorial 3a next in um, a separate tutorial, a separate video, excuse me.